Let me introduce you to a group of people we're going to call the muckrakers. Now, muck if, uh, is kind of that little, well, it means dirt. It means kind of, but not just any dirt, kind of that, that, that black, uh, sticky mud that you kind of find in the bottom of your shoes sometimes. So maybe it's mixed with grass and stones and other kind of stuff, but it's, you know, pretty disgusting muck. Okay. And, um, uh, well, muck raking, uh, means, you know, dealing with it, you know, going through it, cleaning it up. And it's pretty disgusting. But it has to be done, right? You know, if you want to have a nice clean shoes, if you want to have a, a nice uh, clean room, you have to clean things up, you know? I mean, if you just kind of, even though it's, it may not be like the most harmful thing that it is, but it's, nobody wants to clean it up, but somebody's got to do it. And if somebody cleans it up, then you have nice clean shoes, you have nice clean uh house and you know things are much much better okay somebody's got to do it and that's what we're going to be talking about today okay the muckrakers as the 1850s 60s turn turned uh, we began to have a new way of communicating a new way of uh, getting uh, of, lear of learning and uh, that was the the magazine the newspaper you know people began to learn how to how to read and it became cheap enough, and the mail was good enough that you could have what is called magazines. And a magazine is just simply, you know, a bunch of uh, stories all put together. And uh, we we have magazines today. Uh, people don't read them as much, but uh, you know, if you like uh, ESPN, the magazine, the, um, Time magazine, uh, and uh, newspapers are still very very popular. Uh, a newspaper, you know, it's on a cheap piece of paper. It's got lots of stories in it, and they sell it. You know, here in Los Angeles, uh, we have a, we have a number of newspapers: uh, the L.A. Times, uh, La Opinion, uh, La Prensa, and they're they're you know, we're one of the few big cities that has lots and lots of newspapers. Um, every city used to have its own newspaper. Um, Los Angeles had like five. Uh, they have a morning newspaper and an evening newspaper. And uh, people would read it. Uh, it was the the only way. You know, this is before TV, before radio, before the internet. This is how everyone got their information. They became very, very popular, and have a mass circulation. Mass circulation means that you had lots and lots of people who would buy it. Uh, you know, you the you be out of a magazine. You know, it'd be cost you like an. Um, costs you like 10 cents and you get you get you know all these pictures and stories and and uh same thing with the newspaper uh some of the most popular were uh, mcclure's cosmopolitan and collier's uh cosmopolitan is actually still there it's a uh, it's nowadays it's not a it's not really a news magazine it's more of a fashion magazine uh, mostly directed towards women and it's got all and as the magazines got more and more popular one popular feature were journalists known as muckrakers. Journalists are people who work for uh, news. Okay? They they try to uh, they write stories to try to inform, to tell you about things. And well, these journalists uh, weren't just just didn't want to tell people about uh, about things going on. They wanted to figure out how to solve these problems. Okay. Uh, to look for the problems, to dig out the 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 facts, and a lot of times it was like the really disgusting stuff that nobody wants to talk about, and because nobody wants to talk about it, nobody wants to fix it. Well, the the journalists they wanted to fix it because they were progressives. And remember, I told you progressives are all about fixing society. They're all about trying to to make things better because they believe the future is going to be better. Uh, so here's an example, okay, Collier's, you know, it's talking about like a pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical would be like, a, a, well, like medicine, okay? And uh, the, the the drug companies were like, uh, you know, sending medicine to poor people. And uh, they're not doing it to rich people because rich people, you know, would, uh, would get angry if you get sick from the medicine. 
But the poor people, you know, they don't have any choice. They, j they take the medicine and they get sick, but who's going to listen to them? Well, the journalists, the muckrakers, began to listen to them. And they started writing stories about all the about the bad medicine, about the bad business practices, about um, the bad parts of society, societal ill, as you were. And they wanted to expose it. And they wanted to, by exposing it, by letting other people know about it, then you can do something about it through publicity. Let's take a look at this cartoon. Um, it's an octopus, isn't it? Right? An octopus, it's got its tentacles and uh, its arms and every single thing. Um, this octopus represents Standard Oil. Standard Oil uh, was owned by John J. Rockefeller, and I told you he's like one of the richest men in the world. Uh, he controlled the oil industry. How did he control the oil industry? Well, for one thing, uh, he owned all the oil wells, right? You know, the oil wells that dig the oil out of the ground. Um, well, he owned most of them. And uh, he would, you know, drill the oil out of the ground. And then he owned the trucks that take the oil from the, the, the oil wells to the processing plant. And he owned the processing plant. Okay. You know, I don't know if you know this, but oil, uh, you take oil out of the ground, it needs to be refined. Uh, it needs to take out the impurities and it needs to be basically cooked into uh, two different parts. One is kerosene which is uh, used for um, heating, um, yeah, heating and, uh, um, and cooking and stuff. And the other is gasoline, which we use for our cars and stuff. And uh, in order to make it useful, you have to, you have to refine it. And so um, Rockefeller owned the refineries. And not only did he own the refineries, he owned the trucks that take it away from the oil refineries to the gas station, and he owned all the gas stations. Okay, so he owned all this, and uh, this is called a monopoly. And uh, Ida Tarbell began to write about it. She wrote about you know how Rockefeller owned all of the all the things. Now, what's the big deal about uh, Standard Oil owning the uh, oil wells and the trucks to move them and the refinery and the, all the gas stations? Well, is it fair? Well, for one thing, I had a tire bell was mad at, at a Rockefeller. Why? Well, because her father used to own a gas station. You know, he had uh, he owned a small gas station. He owned and tried to compete against Rockefeller. And when he tried to compete, Rockefeller drove him out of business. Now, how can he drive him out of business? Well, um, say like you know he has he has to buy the the gasoline from Rockefeller because you know Rockefeller owns all the processing plants. So you know, all he, all Rockefeller does is raise his prices. Well, you know, he can, you know, he still has not sell it. He, he buys the, the gas from Rockefeller and he sells it. But he, of course he has to sell it for more expensive because Rockefeller is selling it to him for more expensive. And when people come to the gas station, they can either go to, you know, Tarbell's gas station or they go to Rockefeller's. Which one are they going to go to? They're going to go to the cheaper one. And Rockefeller is going to cut the price on his gasoline so it'd be so low that Tarbell can't compete. Right? And um, this is one of the problems of the monopolies and the trusts. Right? His, uh, her father went out of business, and so she wrote a book exposing what, uh, what Rockefeller was doing. And people began to think, wait a second, that's not fair. That's wrong. Something should be done about it. She got other people to believe that Rock what Rockefeller was doing was wrong. And if she never had done that, well, Rockefeller would probably still own all the gas stations today. Okay, It's popular opinion. By exposing what was going on, getting other people to listen to it, other people began to support her and the muckrakers in their fight against big business. If you look in page 336 of your American History book, there's a excerpt from a book called The Jungle. It's by a guy named Upton Sinclair. And um, the story, it, it, it is a story. It takes place about a young immigrant who goes to work in a meatpacking facility. Meatpacking, of course, is like the, um, the guys who uh, 
you know, take the cow, they kill it, they chop it into different pieces, and then they package it and they sell it to you. Okay? I mean, you know, somebody has to do it, right? And, uh, you know, for all those who like hamburgers, you know, you have to, somebody turn, turns the, the cow into uh, ground beef for you. And uh, Upton Sinclair wrote a book about it. Um, it's, and he talked about the contamination and disease in the meatpacking industry. And uh, I know this is not something most people want to hear. You know, you, when you eat your, uh, you eat your chorizo and, uh, and stuff, you just want to just eat it. You know, you don't want to think about well, all what in there. But if you actually learn about it, it's really quite disgusting. Right? The, uh, they describe all kinds of uh, things going on. Uh, when, do you know how to how how meat gets put it gets cut up, you know, and uh, meat gets gets cleaned. And uh, one of the ways that it gets cleaned is uh, with chemicals, and uh, including uh, all kinds of poisons. Um, he described how uh the they had uh, rats running into running around the, the the meat farm well in order to fight the rats they would lay out poison for them and then uh you know sometimes the 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 rats would eat the eat the poison die and then accidentally fall in with the meat uh they would then take all the meat um rats poison and all and grind it all up and make it into hamburger make it into sausages um there were, and you would think, oh, that's, that's, that's impossible. You can't do that. That's, that's disgusting. That's, uh, well, it's, uh, there were no laws. That's just it. There were no laws about uh, how you needed to treat meat, how you needed to treat food. And uh, we have all those today, but we didn't back then. The thing is, Upton, that's not what Upton Sinclair even meant to do. You know, he wanted to write a story about how uh, workers were exploited, about how uh, the meat, the it, big biz, the big businesses went and uh, you know took advantage of their workers and uh, treated them badly, and how uh, this was wrong. And so he, uh, so he, in order to find out what the working conditions were really like, he went undercover. You know, he, he as he's a, he's a writer, he's a journalist, went to college, but he went undercover uh, working in a meatpacking plant, and uh, he worked there for several several months, um, and then uh, and so he learned how everything was how everything worked, and then he wrote a book about it, and like I said, the book is about this young immigrant who uh, you know is moving to America, wants to get a job, so he gets a job at a meatpacking plant, and learns all this really really disgusting stuff and uh, the whole story you know his story about a, a young immigrant got kind of lost kind of lost when the, when the book was published and so he didn't uh, really get to tell the story but everybody just read it for the really disgusting parts okay they wanted to know about what was in their meat what was in what was in the food that they ate because remember there were no laws about how clean you had to be, about what you had to know how to do. Um, people got hurt. People, uh, um, and when they got hurt, well, you know, they didn't, uh, they didn't do anything about them. You know, people uh, lost their jobs when they got hurt. And so he wanted to do something about it, but everybody wanted to read about the food, about the meat. The entire country was disgusted. Read the book. They got they got sick, and uh, but they kept on reading. They wanted to find out more. Uh, the president, the president of the, the entire United States, uh, Theodore Roosevelt, uh, read the book and then he could put aside his uh, breakfast and said, "I can't eat this anymore." You know, the people began to say there ought to be a law. You know, the the food that we eat there it there there should be a law. To uh, to make things uh, to make things clean, to, uh, to we need to regulate the meat industry. You know how bad it was. The Spanish American War, which took place about uh, eighteen 
1890. Okay, the there were uh, the United States fought against Spain. There were 5,400 casualties. That means 5,400 people died. Uh, soldiers were killed. Okay, killed, injured, whatever. Which you know happens during a wartime. Uh, you'd expect you know people to get shot and to to die. Well, the thing is, out of those 5,400, 5, only 400 of them were, were killed or hurt by bullets. The other 5,000, they died because of disease and bacteria, some of which were ca caused because the, the food that they were sent was bad. You know, they sent them, uh, they sent the soldiers uh, uh, food, uh, meat, they packaged it up in cans, and it was, it was spoiled. You know, there was no uh, there was no laws regulating you know how good the food had to be, and the soldiers ate it because well they had no choice, and they got sick and died. That's how bad it was. There are still investigative reporters uh, today, investigative journalists, people still looking out for uh, the problems. You see them on TV. Uh, they, they, they investigate, you know, um, people who, you know, landlords who, who rent to, rent to tenants and don't, uh, don't fix anything. Uh, they investigate, uh, people who try to cheat other people. Uh, it still exists today. Um, uh, I think I've told some of you guys, uh, my sister is a newspaper reporter. She were, used to, she currently works for the Denver Post. Uh, but uh, one time she worked for the Chicago Tribune, and Chicago, tri Chicago, is famous for being uh, connected to the mafia. If you don't know the mafia, that's the um, that's the organized crime. You know, not the not the gangbangers, but the people who control the gangbangers, the people who they the gangbangers pay tribute to, the people who the gangbangers are afraid of. The and newspaper reporters uh, are always trying to find them out. In um, one reporter she knew um, when uh, he left to go do a story to do an interview, you know, he told her, you know, if I'm not back by you know this time, uh, call the police. You know, I've been attacked. In um, in Mexico, uh, you know, you've read about how uh, drug cartels have have targeted, you know, have killed lots and lots of people. You know, their number one target, newspaper reporters, journalists. Because they're always trying to expose what's going on, and uh, they've killed more journalists than any other um, any other group of people, you know, except I guess for other gangbangers. Okay? So it's a dangerous job. There's lots of people who are against them, who are trying to keep them out. But the truth, what they what they're trying to expose, the problems that they're trying to tell about. Um, when people find out about it, it's a start. It's what you can do to change. And that's what publicity will do. The most famous uh, investigative journalists of all time uh, is uh, two guys, Woodward and Bernstein. Uh, they worked for uh, the Washington Post. And uh, they got a tip that there was a, a burglary going on at the Democratic National Headquarters in 1972. Uh, with you know a burglary, somebody breaks into a into a, into an office. That's that's not a big story. I mean, what's what's going to happen? Well, they they started investigating. They started finding out more information. They kept digging and digging and digging, and they connected it um, to the all the way to the to the government, where the government was trying to cover up something, and uh, who was trying to cover it up? What crime was being committed? You know, just a little tiny crime. Uh, break, you know, bre breaking and entering. Well, the people who were breaking and entering worked for the White House. They worked for the president. And the place they were breaking into was the their opponents. They were trying to trying to find out, you know, what the, the opponents were trying to do. And it just kept on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, it led to the president of the United States. You know, the very, very top. And uh, President Richard Nixon, because of their investigation, resigned. You know, had to quit his job because, you know, people were, were asking questions. Like, did he commit a crime? All because of uh, two 
you know, two journalists trying to find out what really happened. The role of the journalist is not just to report the news. It's not just to tell you what's going on, but to find the problems of society. And once you find the problems, then you can start to fix them. That's what the muckraking is all about. And that's what you should do for your project.